Hey, what's going on guys? This is Matt and today we're going over the Beersmith 3 software. It's great uh, home brewing software and also professional brewers use it. Uh, I'm going to go over um, the software itself, a lot of the tabs and a lot of information you need to know when starting to use Beersmith. Hopefully if you're an, uh, you've been using it for a few years, maybe you'll learn some new tips and tricks with it. And if you're just starting out, this is the perfect video for you. Now there's already quite a bit of videos on YouTube about Beersmith 3, but a lot of them are uh, about specific functions and features of Beersmith. Uh, there's not a whole lot of comprehensive videos going over uh, what the software is actually capable of. And I'm also going to go and develop a recipe for this video as well to show you from the start to finish uh, how you would make a recipe on Beersmith. Okay, so when you open Beersmith 3, um, this is what you see. And if you don't see this, then you just want to click on New Recipe. You'll be up here on the top left-hand corner, and you'll be presented with this page. Now, from first glance, this might seem a little overwhelming, but we can go over this uh, pretty quickly, and I, I think you'll start to make a uh, pretty good sense of it uh, pretty quickly. So uh, up here is the name of your recipe. You can put your name down as the brewer or whoever you're brewing with. Um, you can do all grain, partial mash, extract here. I'm assuming uh, that you're doing all grain, so we'll just do all grain here. You can put the batch size down, so if you're looking for 10 gallons or 5 gallons, uh, you can put that down here. I typically just do 5.3 or 5.5, depending on what I'm making. Uh, boil time, typically it's 60, but there's 30 minute mashes. You just add that here. Um, down here under the style guide comparison, uh, if you drop, if you click on that, Beersmith is already preloaded with a lot of um, a lot of styles. And what this is is it's the 2015 BJCP uh, style guide. So, for example, if we're making a porter, um, American porter is fine. Um, if you click on this, it kind of goes through. Uh, what what uh, targets you should be hitting for the porter has a description profile ingredients Tells you what your IBU should be your starting and final gravity And it tells you the number and type it is uh, which is pretty useful What you'd use this for is it kind of shows you your baselines So you want to when you were developing the recipe you're gonna start to see these sliders uh, Go across these bars and that's pretty if you're in the green all that means is is that you're in the style um, recommendation for the American Porter uh, under the style that you selected here. Um, but that will make more sense when we're going into it a little bit later. Um, over here, it just shows you the total grains, hops, bitterness ratio, pre-boil and final gravity estimates based on the ingredients you add here. And over here, you can see, uh, you can add fermentables like your, uh, like your grains, you can add hops, uh, miscellaneous, um, we can go over that in a little bit, uh, yeast and water. Um, there's also a bunch of tabs up here. We're going to go through the first uh, four because those are definitely the most important. Uh, and I don't want to go into too much detail, but that's that's the main main section of Beersmith that I see a lot of videos don't really cover all too much. Um, there's also a lot of information up here. You can scale the recipe or add gravity or bit bitterness up here. I don't really use these options up here, to be honest, but they are there if you need them to be. Um, another thing that's pretty useful is that there's a lot of add-ons for Beersmith as well. Um, so if you go to File and Add-ons, um, there's going to be, you can sort by type, there's a lot of equipment. So for example, if you have uh, the Anvil Foundry, um, you can just click on this and install it. And it will actually install the hardware that the Anvil system has um, to, uh, to Beersmith. So you can just select Anvil and it will have all your volumes all measured out. Um, additionally, um, they have a bunch of different types of grains here. Um, so if there's a certain grain that you're looking for in Beersmith and it's not there, you probably just need to install it. Um, same goes with hops. They got cryo hops or hop hash or whatever. You can install this if you're missing some hops. Um, and then also there's a lot of different types of yeast you can add, a lot of recipes you can add. So for example, let's say you buy a recipe, um, a kit from Northern Brewer. Um, they already have Northern Brewer porters here. You can go in here and install this. And then you can just open up the recipe that you bought and it will have all the ingredients already loaded in here. So there's no reason to 
uh, you know, copy over part by part to build your own recipe when they already have a bunch of recipes already preloaded. And here's the yeast as well. Um, so if there's a yeast that you're noticing that isn't in here, you probably just need, need to install the add-on. There's one more thing I want to cover before we start building out a recipe, and that's equipment profiles. You're going to see this on the on the top here. I kind of skipped it in the beginning, but I want to come back to it just because it's, a, it's an important topic to cover. When you first install Beersmith 3, there's going to be a bunch of preloaded equipment uh, profiles here. I deleted all those on mine, but I have a I have a screenshot of what it typically looks like. So you're going to see like all grain 10 gallon, uh, all grain 5 gallon, uh, brew in a bag 10, 5, and then ciders, extract. So Typically what you'd want to do here is like, let's say you're doing a five gallon all grain batch. You want to click on one of these two profiles. You'd want to read the rest of this. I'm assuming uh, they have some more information here uh, specific to, there's a reason why there's two here. So I'll just read these and pick the one that's closest to you. Um, if you have a specific uh, a system, like a Blickman or an Anvil, a mash and boil, a claw hammer supply, um, they typically have equipment profiles on their website to use for Beersmith that you can import. Uh, or like I mentioned in the add-ons, um, there are usually a bunch of uh, equipment profiles here. So uh, here's the, like the Bruzilla, the Grainfather, RoboBrew, uh, Spike Nano. So they have all these equipment things. You don't really have to do any, any work here. What it looks like is if we edit this, um, this is the claw hammer brew in the bag kettle 120 volt. Uh, this came right from Clawhammer's website, so it has uh, the mash ton volume, weight, dead space, boil volume. So you can see how this would be important to have when you're developing a recipe because uh, you want to know, you know, you don't if you have a boil volume of 6.28 gallons, you don't want to be making a 10 gallon recipe, uh, or you also want to know what your boil off rate is, so your your gravity will be in check in the software. So there's a lot of stuff in here that uh, you don't really have to touch if you uh, get it from the manufacturer, if you add it uh, from, from the actual add-ons, or if you're just using one of the default ones. Uh, if you just open it up, you can adjust these things. So like, let's say you, you noticed one day that you didn't boil off that much, then you can start tweaking this through your brew days to start dialing in your Beersmith equipment profile because all the equipment can be different. And uh, so, you know, you can start adjusting this as you have your brew days and and then that's gonna be really dialed in. Uh, but that pretty much goes over equipment. So you wanna have equipment profile selected um, to go over adding ingredients. Um, now, I'm not gonna make a recipe just yet. I actually have a recipe already made, uh, but just to save some time, I don't have to add all these individually, but just to show you how to add ingredients. Uh, if you wanna look for fermentable, so like let's say we wanna add uh, 10 pounds of two row, um, there's the pale malt two row us. It has the uh, SRM. So the color that you're going to get and the potential, uh, starting gravity you're going to get in the price. Uh, obviously this is going to be dependent on how much you buy of it and where you're buying your, your grains from, but let's say, you know, you can adjust the down, uh, the amount down here. So 10 pounds using the mash, you can hit okay. And then a few things are going to change here. Uh, you're going to notice down here is, uh, the uh, the actual sliders are going to start to move for the uh, ABV and the gravity because we've added uh, some malt to it. The bitterness isn't going to change because we haven't added any bittering additions yet. But and then the uh, and then the color is going to start to change over here, and this will kind of show you what color your beer is going to end up being um, when you start uh, developing the recipe. Um, just to add hops, it's very similar to uh, so like let's say you want to add some Centennial, we're going to add one ounce. You can adjust this here boiling additions, but they have dry hop, mash, whirlpooling hops uh, to select here. And also dry hops, you can adjust for how many days you're dry hopping for, but let's say we're boiling with one ounce for 60 minutes, um, then you can just hit okay. And you're gonna notice that the bitterness is starting to go up now because we've just added a bittering addition. And uh, yeast is again the same. Um, you can scroll down here and look for your yeast that you're using. Let's say you're using, uh, house yeast from Imperial. Um, you can click on this and uh, just hit OK. And it's going to add one package of house Imperial yeast. Um, and that's about how you add ingredients. It's pretty it's pretty simple on how you do this. Um, so to save some time, I already have a recipe here that I brewed about two weeks ago. It's a London Porter um, to kind of go over this really quickly. 
Um, we got some malt here. We got some East Kent Golding hops. Uh, we have, you can ignore the water and the um, brewing salts for now. We'll go over that in a minute. Um, and then I have my one package of ale yeast here. Um, down here, you're going to kind of see that the sliders are kind of where they need to be for an English porter. Um, the gravity is technically a little high um, on this. So, you know, if I was submitting this for competition, I'd probably want to dial back my grains a little bit. I'll probably cut back on the Maris Otter just a tad to get the gravity a little bit more in line with the, with the style guide. But if it's just if you're just brewing for you and your friends and family, it doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is kind of what it is for uh, for what this whole thing's about down here. Um, yeah, so that's that's essentially uh, you know how you add the recipe. It has the color over here. There's your recipe right there. It's for 5.5 gallons. Um, the nice thing about it too is uh, it gives you based on your equipment profile, it gives you some really really nice metrics here to track on brew day. For example my pre-boil volume so this is um, after my mash I should have uh, 6.5 gallons so it's something to track if you're higher or lower than that then you can adjust your profile and your uh, your water settings and beer smith to adjust that to make it more accurate in the future um, also down here it says I have 11.25 pounds of grain 1.9 ounces of hops uh, my bitterness ratio my estimated pre-boil gravity Again, it's a really nice helpful metric here because it can help you track if you have do like a refractometer or hydrometer reading before you start your boil. You can kind of take this and see where you're at if you need to add uh, a liquid malt extract or dry malt extract or sugar or anything to get that back up. If your efficiency wasn't so great, uh, that's another nice metric to have. And it also has your estimated final gravity based on your boil off rate set in your equipment profile. Um, and also it's assuming that you hit this pre-boil gravity number as well. So again, provides a lot of useful information here. To uh, finish off the recipe, like I said, we're gonna come back to this water, brewing salts and, and stuff here in a second. Um, the next tab is the starter tab. So this is for yeast starters. Um, this is also a pretty nice feature because it kind of tells you how many yeast cells you need uh, to brew this beer uh, efficiently. And um, you'll notice that it is recommending 203 billion yeast cells and my London ale yeasts only provide uh, 96 billion uh, viable cells. So it's essentially saying that if I'm not using a yeast starter, then I need to buy three packs of this to sufficiently supply enough yeast to ferment this beer. That's what this is saying. Now, if you use a yeast starter, which I would recommend uh, just to save money, is uh, it over here it tells you your recommended starter size um, over here and then your starter gravity what you should be targeting for so example uh, like it's saying I need two liters of a starter so like let's say I do two liters of a starter at one at 1036 which is about where a yeast starter should be at for gravity it's saying I need to add 6.76 ounces to generate 202 billion yeast cells so instead of buying three packs, you'd use the one pack, do a two liter starter with this much malt, and you'd end up with the two, 202 billion that you need to ferment this beer. Now, if you have a stir plate, which I would recommend, is you're gonna get a lot better efficiency from your, um, from your starter. So if you click on the use stir plate, you can see that the recommended starter size uh, actually changed from two to 0.8. Um, so it's a pretty big change. So if we change this back to 0.8, well, look, now I only have to use 2.7 ounces to get 200 billion, which is pretty damn close to what I actually need to ferment this beer. So that's kind of what the that's kind of what the uh, starter page is for to calculate how much yeast you need. Uh, you can always just throw one pack in, even if it says you need 200 billion yeast cells, it's fine. But I'd recommend uh, to get higher quality beer is that you uh, you actually put in the amount of yeast cells that you need to ferment the beer at. Uh, the next is the water page. Now the water page is really cool because this is for brewing salts. Uh, so if you uh, if you add uh, like calcium chloride or baking soda or Epsom salt to your beer, this is kind of what you're going to be using to calculate how much you need to have in order to hit a certain number. So let me delete all of this real quick and I'll show you what it's like when we first open the page. 
So when we first open the water page, this is what you're presented with. So it actually tells you how much water you need for the whole brew day. So I need about 7.2 gallons. And this is the water that you're using to brew your beer. So if we click on add water, um, I typically use distilled water. Um, so I would just search distilled and then it's gonna give you zero magnesium, sodium, sulfate, chloride, bicarbonate. Um, if you um, get a water report from your city or if you know how much is in the water that you're brewing with, um, then you can make your own water profile. So you can create a new water profile here, say uh, my city, and then adjust this based on your water report that is provided from you from your city. I think it's easier to just use distilled water so you don't have to mess around with that. Um, so you can just search for distilled. So there it is, that's my starting water. And then I wanna say what I want to adjust the water to. So over here you can see match a target profile. You can click on this and you can see, you can choose a target profile. So I already chose the London, uh, England profile since I'm brewing a London Porter, uh, but they also have a Porter profile. Um, you can choose a target profile. So let's say I'm brewing a Porter, so I want the Porter profile. So it's gonna automatically say, well, to hit this Porter profile, you need to add uh, 300 chloride to 100 sulfate. I think that's a little aggressive. Um, that's why I probably didn't go with this profile when I was brewing the beer. But let's say, let's say I'm doing this, uh, this Porter profile. I can just double click on that. And then it tells you uh, what your numbers are here. So you can add these here. So like, let's say you only wanted to do 200. So a two to one sulfate to chloride ratio. And we don't want to exclude chalk. So buying chalk is super, super cheap. Um, so we're going to just keep the chalk in there. And then we just hit OK. Well, look at that. It tells you based on the 7.17 gallons of distilled water that has this baseline, you need to add these ingredients to hit the targeted profile that you just added in the beer smith. Um, and this will show up under your design page. It will show the 7.17 distilled water gallons and it will show you the, uh, the ingredients that you need to add to hit that profile. So it all goes back to your design page. Uh, so when you print this off, you'll know exactly what to add on brew day. Um, the last thing I wanna go over is the mash page. Um, so you can add, so similar to um, equipment profiles, there's also mash profiles. I have two here uh, for me. Um, I This is just the claw hammer profile for my brewing system. Uh, they have uh, the big difference from this to a lot of the ones that come pre-installed is, is that it's brewing a bag. So, down here, you can adjust this based on your system, you know, your grain temp, your mash ton temp, your sparge water. Uh, but if you click on the uh, Bruna bag mash with full boil, it's gonna disregard the sparge. Um, so I have that selected uh, here. Um, so, and then it shows just how much, how many quarts of water to add at your, uh, your strike water temp to hit the certain uh, water or the uh, temperature that you wanna hit for your mash. So if it, my step is 152, so like you can edit this. So like, let's say I want to, I want to, my mash to be 1050. Um, you can hit that. And now it's going to say that in order to hit 1050, you need to add the same amount of water because the water amount's not going to change, but the, uh, the temperature is going to change based on how much, uh, how much your grain temperature is and how high your mash ton temperature is. Um, so it's a nice little calculation here. And again, like I said, if you're doing Bruna bag, I would recommend full boil mashes um, and just select this option and it will do the calculation without the sparge. So uh, we can close out of that. Um, so right here, we're just gonna select the no sparge. And then I also have a sparge just to show you what a sparge looks like. Um, oh, weird. Okay, never mind. Um, we're just gonna use this profile. Typically, it would say, um, like, okay, you need to add 20 quarts here. And then for the, uh, for the uh, sparge, it will say 170. Uh, you know, the additional eight quarts or whatever you're sparging with. Um, over here, I'm gonna move my, my camera over here just so you can see this as well. The other thing that you wanna do is, uh, the nice thing is if you're measuring pH, which you should be if you're doing all grain, uh, it's a nice little calculator to use. So let's say that your um, target is 5.2, which is pretty common target uh, pH. And uh, let's say you measure it at um, I don't know, five, eight. Um, so obviously it's a little high um, and you need to add some acid to get that down to your target. Right here, you can select your acid that you have, if it's lactic or phosphoric. 
Um, lactic is a little bit more aggressive, so you can add usually a little bit less of it. So if it's at 88% concentration, which the bottle should have, I think 88 is pretty common for lactic acid. It'll tell you how much acid to add to hit this target profile. Um, so it's, again, really super useful, where if you only have phosphoric acid, uh, I think minus 10%, so you have to add a lot more to hit this target profile. Um, you know, there's pros and cons to both, but uh, lactic will usually do the job pretty quickly. And uh, that about covers it. Uh, I hope this didn't take too long. It should be around 20 minutes. And uh, if you want to go back to the design page, you can print this out. So it's an easy uh, page to view on Brew Day. You just go to File, uh, we'll do Print Preview. And this is kind of what it will look like. It'll tell you your ingredients, your uh, numbers that you should be hitting estimated gravity, uh, your system information, your mash information, so how much to add uh, for your steps, uh, and then carbonation and stuff down here. So um, as you can see, Beersmith, uh, if, if, you, if you know how to use it, it's a very, very uh, powerful tool to have uh, on your brew day. Uh, like I said, uh, everyone from home brewers use it to uh, professional brewers use it, so it's a great tool to have. Um, I would recommend uh, the $15 a year it is to, to, to own the software, um, but I would, I would also recommend trying it out, uh, do the uh, few week trial and see if you like it. And, uh, but that about covers it. Uh, if there's something that I didn't cover, and I didn't cover the whole program, mind you, um, this is just kind of an introduction into Beersmith 3. If there's something I didn't cover, or if I, if I scanned over something a little too quickly, let me know in the comment section below. I check the comments all the time. I get a notification every single time I get a comment. So I'm pretty quick on them. So let me know if you have any questions. If you want a part two, um, let me know. Uh, I can go over uh, even more nitty gritty features. I can go over the rest of Beersmith. I can go over specific things uh, like how to uh, adjust your equipment profile. So yeah, just uh, let me know in the comments. Um, and anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it informative and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.